tax four dollars a gallon. Police departments are fighting the same gas budgets as all of us. And some departments from New Jersey to California are considering following the lead of the town of Holly Springs, Georgia. Starting next week, motorists will get slapped with a twelve dollar surcharge for every moving violation. C.T. Martin is a city councilman from Holly Springs, his neighbor, Atlanta. He's proposed his own surcharge plan. And Kenneth Bell is with fi uh, Aspera Financial. He's here to tell us what these surcharges might mean for the state of the economy. Gentlemen, good morning. Uh, C.T., i got to ask morning. you, talk to me about this surcharge. By the way, for the record, I think this is a fantastic idea. $12 surcharge, maybe even make it 15 And by the way, enforce that, that speed limit. Okay, tell me about your surcharge. Well, we're kind of moving away from that word. Uh, however, we are in, you know, in the bureaucracy stage, uh, the final set of approvals. Um, done our research, uh, and we started out, you know, checking out how Holly Springs was doing it in other cities around the country to uh, to get a real good fix on what is the best way to handle this. My main goal is I simply do not want a tax increase. Uh, property tax increase in the city of Atlanta. So we right, were right, trying to find. Hold on, wait, wait, stop for a second. Tell me about what what is causing the twelve dollar fifteen or whatever number you come up with. Why are you doing this? What's going on with the police departments? Well, because uh, when you run a traffic light or you get involved in anything dealing with moving violations, sometimes it's more than just one police car that's involved. So the minute that the policeman has to move from their position. Uh, chasing you or uh, pulling you over, they're using extra gas, and with the prices of gas now, we got to be able to cover that. It wasn't in our original operating budget. All right, Kenneth, let the, do these guys, these police departments across the country, have any other options other than these surcharges that they're putting on moving violations? <laughs> You know, I'm a value-minded person, and when I first heard about this story, my first thought was, if you've got a $12 fine, gas is at about $4 per gallon, that works out to three gallons of gas per speeding ticket. If we assume that the average police car gets 20 miles per gallon, then any speeder who wants to get the most value for his money really should be aiming for a 60-mile police chase. But that, that's, of course, tongue-in-cheek, and I'm not here to condone speeding. I don't even like speed reading. Uh, this really, in all seriousness, it's illustrative of the inflationary, deflationary, and budgetary constraints and pressures that uh, states and municipalities throughout this country are facing right now. We, we're rapidly moving out of an environment where states and municipalities were budgeting and spending based upon forecasts of rising, high property tax receipts, sales tax receipts, right, tax receipts. Give a Ken, let me stop you for a second. How, there's no way to sure. budget next year for a price of, uh, of, of a gallon of gasoline that's gone up by 40 percent. No one saw that coming. So what's wrong with adding a surcharge to a speed who's breaking the law, violating, and also doing something that frankly isn't helping the environment or helping the, the oil situation out anyway? But there's, there's nothing wrong with the surcharge. I'm not here to really argue against the surcharge. It, it is a tax hike, let's call it what it is, but it's a sin tax. And in this environment of budgetary deficits, this is the easiest type of tax to pass. I really think this is the low-hanging fruit. The budgetary deficit problem that's out there on the state and local issue is vast, and it's just now starting to get some press. Um, this to me is the low-hanging fruit. It's easy for a town council to get behind this. You only pay this if, if you've broken the law, and the cost of it is relatively modest, in this case, 10 to $15. Okay. All right, listen, so, CT, let me go back to you for a second. Is this a tax or is this a temporary surcharge? It's a temporary um, addition to your fine. Uh, you know, words in itself can, can create different kinds of emotions uh, from people. So we, we're very clear. We're only trying to cover the cost of our officers when they have to move from their stationary positions. Okay, what happens if prices of gasoline go back down? Do you, do you eliminate the surcharge? Yes, we would. We would, we would certainly would want to take a look at uh, coming back down again. We're not trying to gouge people. Uh, so, Kenneth, what's wrong with that? If the price of gas is high, they inflict the surcharge. After there. it goes back down, they, they remove it. Oh, that's fine. I guess I want to be clear, though. Is that actually written into this proposal, into this law here, that when gasoline prices come back down, or if they come back to a specific level, that this surcharge goes away? Because, as we know, governments, once they get a hand, they get their hand in our pockets uh, and get a little extra revenue, they don't like to get that back. Hey, CT, what about uh, instructing your police departments to be more fuel efficient? 
uh, drive, the way they drive, uh, the way they send people out on, on patrols? Well, we definitely are covering that. But one of the things I want to remind everybody is that this, this uh, additional fine is discretionary. We cannot tell a judge when to apply it, and we can only kind of set a benchmark. Um, it, that's left up to them. Hey, CT, do you have any feedback from your constituents yet? Uh, everything's been good. I mean, you know, the one thing people do not want is additional property tax, and they want, um, you know, us to keep the city safe. All right, great. Thank you, Kenneth and CT. Now let's take a look uh, over to Charles at Fox 50. All right, thanks so much, Eric. The Fox 50 was down for the second straight trading day yesterday.